This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today we're going to discuss something that a whole bunch of you have been asking me about, this disk detainer pick. Now I own and use several of these tools, but this is the one that you can purchase for about $5, making it roughly 10 times less expensive than the next cheapest one that I use. And the prices go up pretty steeply from there. So if you are just starting out picking disk detainer locks, this is probably what you're using. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out of the box, so you really will need to modify it. Now I've seen a few videos that touch on this, but they really only address how to prepare this tool for the cheapest of the cheap Chinese locks. What I'm going to do is show you how I think you can get the very most out of the tool. Now the first thing you need to modify is the tip, or the portion of this tool that directly manipulates the disks. There are a couple different kinds of them. There are flat and profile tips. Now a flat tip looks like this. You can see it's very, very skinny and is roughly rectangular in shape. This is much thicker and has a diamond shape. You can see it's a little bit ugly, but that is a diamond there. And let me show you the reason why it needs to be that diamond shape. What I have here is a disc detainer lock and what I'm going to do is rotate the first couple of disks at about a 45 degree angle to the other disks. And if we look down the keyway, you can see that makes a small diamond shape in there. And that's what the inside of the lock looks like while you're picking. So you need a tip that can navigate through that diamond. So while our tip isn't going to end up being actually diamond shaped, I still call it a diamond profile because that's what it needs to go through. Unfortunately, that diamond profile will only take you so far. If you look at this ABIS disk detainer key, you can see an example of pretty extreme bidding right here on what I believe is the number four disk. And what that represents are two disks that are at about a 90 degree angle to each other. So that's essentially, if we were to rotate these disks a little bit more, you can look down that keyway and you can see that diamond profile tip will never fit through there. The only thing that you can use to navigate a keyway like that is a flat tip which can fit in between the disks. Now, if you're feeling really ambitious, you could put a flat tip on a tool like this, take the old tip off and braze a new one on, much like I did with this cobbled together tool. Unfortunately, that's not an easy thing to do. To get this strong enough that I could use it, I needed to use brass braze, which requires some pretty high temperatures, and I also put an interference fit on that tip. So it's probably something that most people are not able to do. And probably if you're spending that much time, you're gonna wanna start on a better base than something like this. So let's talk about what the average person can do using nothing but a file we're going to need to alter both the thickness and the profile of this tip. Now, the thickness is pretty important because as this comes, it's very thick. And what I mean by that is from the tip to the top of the tip, that's about two and a half to three millimeters. And as that is right now, you're gonna be turning two to three disks at a time. So what you're gonna to need to do is file that down to about one and a quarter millimeters. You can make it a little smaller than that, but not much. Now at this point, you may run into a problem, and that's with respect to how these tips are attached. If we look very carefully, you can see a crimp mark right along here, and that's how they're attached. They simply shove them on, a machine crimps them down, and hopefully they'll stay in place. However, once the tool is this thin, there isn't a lot of meat to that crimp, and it's gonna start spinning on you. I know it did for me. So what you're going to have to do is get some flux and solder and attach that tip with something a little bit sturdier. I used a low temperature, high strength gunsmithing solder, which is pretty much perfect for this application, but I'd imagine probably any plumbing solder will work. Now let's talk about the profile. And as it comes from the factory, this diamond profile is way too large. If we look at this kryptonite lock, you can see 
it literally won't even fit in the keyway. And you're gonna find that's the case with respect to a lot of disc detainer locks. It comes from the factory about six and a half millimeters from end to end and about, let's see, what was that? I think I measured that at about two millimeters wide. What we're gonna have to do is file this down to about 5.75 millimeters long and 1.75 millimeters wide. And once you get it down to that thickness, you're gonna find that it fits through there very, very easily. I also didn't feel it was necessary to keep a strictly diamond shape. I rounded it out, made it roughly like a football, and I found that works pretty darn well. Okay, now let's talk about the tensioning head, or this portion right here, which engages the first discs and allows you to tension the lock. Now in factory form, this tensioning head may work on some of the super cheap Chinese locks, but once you step up from the bottom tier, it's pretty much worthless for two reasons, profile discs and spinners. A spinner is a solid steel disc that's on top of the main disc stack that can spin a full 360 degrees. You can find one right here. You can see I can just spin this around and they come in varying thicknesses, but I've seen them as thick as five millimeters thick. Now, imagine the flats on this tip need to reach through a spinner. Sometimes it can be, like I said, as much as five millimeters thick and then engage a disc below it. You simply don't have enough flat space here. Right now we only have about three millimeters. I found it was necessary to file it down to about six and a half millimeters. And it looks pretty rough. I didn't do it all at once. I filed more to the flats every time I found I needed it for a particular lock. And that's probably what you'll end up doing. You'll probably put about four or five millimeters on it and then slowly expand it as needed. The next reason you're going to have to modify your tensioning head has to do with profile discs. A lot of times those spinners have little bits of warding on them to make them match the profile of the key. Usually that's right in the center and on this kryptonite lock, you can see we have exactly that, little bits of warding on the center on either side. Now, as this comes from the factory with these flats, that will never fit through the spinner disc. So what you need to do is file away the center section. And again, what I did was as I found that I needed more depth on filing that center section away, I took it apart and filed it down a little bit more. My concern was I didn't wanna take away too much material and weaken the tool. So I only take away the amount I need for the particular application. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> A couple of final things that are optional, but I think they're pretty darn helpful. Now, when I pick disc detainer locks, I tend to use a lot of tension. I know some others don't, but I find it is, is frankly much, much faster. And to help facilitate that, what I've done is add screws that are slightly longer, probably only about a half inch longer, but that little extra bit of leverage really makes it more comfortable. Second, some people have found that their tools are really rough on the inside, making spinning them pretty hard. You can see that's not the case on this one. I have not smoothed that out at all. This one's from the factory and again, pretty smooth. But what some people will do is take theirs apart and put this in a drill bit. I'm sorry, put this in a drill chuck, spin it up, hit it with sandpaper, get it ultra smooth. Frankly, I don't find that necessary. The only time I did find it necessary was on mine right up top. I had some pretty gnarly bits of chroming that were actually catching on the locks. So I did spin this up and take a little bit of material off so it's smoother. Finally, I would consider either loctiting or soldering this shaft into the thumb turn. And the reason why I, I think that's necessary, I actually loctited mine in was the shaft can slip while picking under tension, even if you have these little set screws nailed down pretty darn hard. At a bare minimum, I would carry around a tension, or I'm sorry, a hex wrench, 
that can tighten these set screws down because I'll tell you, once this starts slipping, it can be really frustrating, particularly if you don't have the tool you need to fix it. So that's how I think you can get the most out of these tools. Since I do have this lockout, we might as well see how the modified tool works. I know you've seen me use it a few times on this channel before, but there is one thing I want to note. First thing I do when picking is rotate all of the discs as far clockwise as they will go. And then I'm going to counter rotate the spinner and the top disc just a little bit counterclockwise. The reason I'm doing that is that now that I have these long flats, the possibility of inserting the tensioning head too far becomes very real. I can pick up two or three discs with this, sometimes even more. So by counter rotating those first few discs, I've created a small ledge there onto which this tensioning head will sit and it makes it impossible to insert it too far. So let's get this in there. Okay, we're tensioning off disc one, so let's start looking for disc two. Got a little click there. Click out of three, click out of four, click out of five. Nothing on six or seven. Let's go back to the beginning. Two is pretty loose, so is three. I think four is binding, got to click there. Five is loose. Six and seven are both loose. Not sure what's holding us up now. There we go, it was number two. So we went from having a tool that wouldn't even fit through the front door to a tool that can navigate and manipulate these locks pretty darn easily. I hope this was helpful. That's it for today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.